Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome. Welcome to my YouTube. Uh, I wanted to make a video about the 47 pounds that I've lost. For anyone out there who is struggling, because I know the struggle is real. I know when I started this, this particular round of a weight loss journey, because I have lost weight before, that means I gained it back. And now this time I've lost weight, and the plan is to keep it off. When I was looking for videos for inspiration, I found there were maybe women who were losing baby weight, which that is very valid, but I am not losing baby weight. It's as if I had had a baby, but I didn't. Just gained the weight, was eating for two or three or triplets. I also saw videos of women who were in their early 20s who lost, you know, 40 pounds in 12 weeks, that kind of stuff. Or I saw people who were doing really extreme things like juice cleanses, water fast, strict keto, all these kinds of like diets. I just knew I was gonna have to find my own way. And so this is really for you if you are someone who has struggled with your weight for years, someone who maybe is a food addict, emotional eater, sugar addict, if any of those things kind of resonate with you, then this video really is for you. Okay, I'm not gonna go into my whole life story, but yeah, weight, body, image, the obsession with food, all of that has been an ongoing um, struggle in my life. And I guess I'll just kind of go back a few years to a really sort of like pivotal moment. Thanksgiving, 2017. I was with my boyfriend at the time uh, who became my fiance, is now my ex-fiance, that's a whole other story. But we were spending our first Thanksgiving together and we were at his family's house. And his aunt came up to me, this is towards the end of Thanksgiving dinner, put her arm around my waist and said, you're a big woman, aren't you? loud enough for everyone in the whole family in the whole room to hear and i wanted to crawl away into a corner curl up and die i was mortified i know my boyfriend heard it i know his mom heard it his dad his sister sister's husband everyone in the entire family heard this woman call me a big woman I remember calling a girlfriend of mine and just crying from the depths of my soul. Uh, it was just like, not really even the embarrassment, it was the shame because I had gotten so out of control and I just couldn't stop eating. And at that point, I would say I was probably about 250 pounds. I don't know because I had stopped weighing myself, which is usually what happens. It's like as you get into the food, the weight, the scale, who wants to get on a scale? No one wants to face the truth. So I had stopped weighing myself. At this point, I had no idea what I weighed, but I thought I was hiding it well. I was wearing a black anthropology jumpsuit that I always wore because it was the only thing in my closet that fit. And it was stretchy and flattering, probably the most flattering thing I could wear. And I thought I was hiding it well, and I was not. Clearly, I was not hiding it as well as I thought in my own delusion. I'm five foot six. I stopped weighing myself. Um, I'm guessing I was around 250. I came home from that and I decided to sign up for Weight Watchers. I made it a few weeks. I think I'd lost maybe eight pounds and life happened. I just really wasn't committed. Even though that moment was so painful, it wasn't enough for me to really make a huge life change, which losing weight is a life change. You are changing your lifestyle that's the only way, which you always hear, that's the only way it's gonna work. But I have some other tips and tricks that I'm gonna share. I'm gonna really go through, oh yeah, I have my 10 tips that I've written down. So I'll be looking over here on my notes. At the end, I'll just kind of go over exactly what I eat like specifically in a day. Really, uh, as painful as it was, it still took me another, oh, I guess two years to really get myself together enough to really take this seriously. So right now we're in April, 2021 and I'm 47 pounds down. I started a little over a year ago, right, I'd say a little bit before quarantine or the lockdown happened of 2020. Um, I started making some small changes here and there. And then I really got dedicated and really committed. And it's been slow and steady. It hasn't been some super fast thing and I haven't done anything drastic, but I'll tell you what I have done and what's worked. So, okay, the first thing that I have on my, uh, my little notepad, get honest, get honest. That was what 
I needed to do. I needed to get honest with myself. I needed to really know what my truth was. I am addicted to sugar, addicted to flour. The way that people get addicted to cocaine, heroin, the way that alcoholics are with alcohol, I am addicted to those foods. When I eat those foods, I cannot stop. And I know a lot of people are like, of course, yeah, that's the nature of sugar. If I eat sugar, I want more. But that's not it for me. It's like if I eat it and until it's all gone, I will be thinking about it. You could be talking to me. You could be telling me the most fascinating story. You could be the most fascinating person. You could be, I could be talking to Barack Obama at, in the White House. And if there is half a piece of chocolate cake behind him, I will just be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'll be thinking about the cake. Nothing else exists. Nothing else matters. It's the number one most important thing in my life. If I'm eating sugar and flour, that's how insane I get. That's my truth. So you need to know your truth. What's your truth? What are the foods that when you eat, you can't stop? What are the foods that cause your body to gain weight? What are the habits that maybe you need to change? Maybe it's drinking too much with your friends, watching too much television because you're trying to numb out at night. Maybe there are relationships that you're going to have to let go of. You're going to have to get really honest with yourself. And I needed to get really brutally honest with myself. And when it came down to it, the bottom line was my truth is that I am addicted to those foods. And when I ingest them, it creates a sensation that I cannot, I just can't control. So my best bet is to just stay away from those foods. So I had to make peace with the fact that I was going to be making these lifestyle changes that were going to be permanent, although the only moment we have really is like right now, but it just means that I, I ain't gonna mess with those foods no more. It's not worth it for me. So that's where I started. This is around the time where keto was sort of, I mean, keto is still now really big, but I'd say this was like beginning of January, January, 2020. So there was keto everything everywhere. Like you could find sugar-free versions of all things. And I was just having sugar-free uh, Froyo, sugar-free ice creams, sugar-free flour alternatives. And that gradually started to get out of control for me as well. So I had to cut those things out also. So tip number one, get honest with yourself. Who are you? Know who you are. Know what your problems are. Know what your weaknesses are. And do some journaling, some writing around it. And see what comes up. And that's going to help you as we move on into the next steps. But the first thing is to get all nails. Get honest. Number two, get organized. You gotta get organized if you're gonna lose some weight. I actually have a blog post up on my blog, thecarloproject.com, and it's how I organize my kitchen for uh, weight loss. When you're taking on something new, you gotta get some momentum going. So the beginning is the hardest part for the weight loss journey, okay? We're not even talking about maintenance. That's a whole other thing that I never really understood or knew. <laughs> that that was part of the whole journey. I just lose the weight and then I'd be like, okay, let's go eat. But yeah, maintenance is a whole separate thing. Getting organized, it for me, that looked like getting a uh, food scale, getting measuring spoons. I don't count calories. I don't do anything super restrictive because that also is a trigger for me. You know how we said get honest. I know that if I do anything really restrictive like intermittent fasting, if I do keto, if I do a fast, if I do a cleanse, that triggers me into binging. If, I, if the pendulum switch swings too far this way, I am going to course correct and make sure that it goes the other way. So I can't do anything super restrictive anymore. I've lost the right to uh, to restrictive diets. I just needed to get organized in terms of like, I go grocery shopping for sure. On Mondays, I have my glass containers where I store my food. I have things that are easy prep to go. I get my whole rotisserie chicken from Gelson. I know what I need. I'm organized. It takes some effort at the beginning to know that this is a, a priority in your life, basically. It's like a stopped car that you're trying to push. It takes more effort to push it in the beginning. And then as the wheels start rolling, things start to move, the momentum picks up and takes over. But at the beginning, you are pushing hard. Get all the tools that you need, fill your pantry, your fridge with all the stuff that you want and check out that blog post because I go over everything that's in my pantry. The third thing, once you've gotten honest with yourself, once you've gotten organized, then you need to commit to your plan. Okay, this is the part, this is the part where it's like, oh, I gotta commit to it. What does it mean to commit? It's like a decision. It's like you're cutting, you're, you're drawing a line in the sand. You are committing to this new way, this new you, this new life. Like for me, I had to make it dramatic. I had to be like, this is a, what's that word? 
It's not reimagining yourself, reinventing, reinventing yourself. This is a chance to reinvent yourself. We get one life, but in this lifetime, we get so many opportunities to reinvent ourselves. You get to decide who you are and where your life is going to go. And it's like, I needed to make it this big thing for myself inside of my own mind so that I could really commit. It was like, I didn't wanna just keep having one foot in, one foot out. And so committing to your plan, whatever that plan is, you pick the plan. If, if you wanna do keto, do keto. If you wanna do Weight Watchers, do Weight Watchers. You pick the plan based on what's true for you. And if you're a sugar addict or you're addicted to flour and it creates like major problems for you, then you may need to cut those foods out. And if so, then you're going to commit to that decision. And you are 100% putting both feet into this new life. You're not gonna be able to do it if you're on the fence. So one of the other tips that I have that ties in with that is to know your why. The way that I did this was I took out a piece of paper and I wrote down all the reasons why I wanted to uh, lose weight. Okay, that's an easy list to make. We all know all the benefits of weight loss. Like you're gonna feel better, you're gonna look better, your mental health is better, your emotional health is better. Everything is better, right? It's like clothes fit, you get to go shopping. It's really great, it's wonderful. But then I made another list of why do I want to give up sugar and flour? Because those foods always pulled me back in. So I made a list as long as possible of all the reasons why I wanted to give up sugar and flour. Sorry, my bed isn't really made, but whatever. So I made a list of all the reasons why I, why it would be good for me or beneficial for me or the best thing ever to give up these foods. These foods that I have had a love affair with for years, why do I wanna give these up? Why am I making a commitment to this new way of life? That's that fourth part. It's like, know your why. What's your, what's your reason? And so I knew that I had had enough at that point. It was making me sick and I really didn't wanna be ruled by something else. I wanted freedom, I wanted to feel better, I wanted to get to this next level and next stage and next phase of my life. I didn't wanna stay on the hamster wheel. Now, this next tip is just really more practical. And it's basically to have foods that you love on hand. So I know I can't use sugar and flour anymore. I don't eat sweets, I don't eat um, fake desserts even. I don't eat, uh, if I eat bread, it's whole grain, like Ezekiel bread, really boring. Or um, yeah, so I still eat whole grains and I eat brown rice, sweet potato, all that stuff. I just don't eat flour because I have the, I get the, hmm, I get the crazy eyes. For me, keeping healthy foods on hand means that if I'm home on a Tuesday night and the thought comes to me, I'm gonna door dash, I wanna get something good to eat tonight. If I have something in my home that I really love to eat. It's so much easier for me to not go down the road of ordering out. I know, okay, this sounds weird, but one of my favorite things is the Wingstop ranch dressing. I think that they have the best ranch dressing. It is very premium ranch dressing. I love that ranch. If that ranch is in my fridge, I'm staying home and I'm eating my carrot sticks with my ranch. I also have like frozen salmon from Whole Foods that I love to eat. So I'll get, uh, I'll like roast this garlic butter salmon and make my carrots with my ranch dressing. Uh, it's like half fancy, half not. That's one of my favorite dinners. I just make sure that I have things in my house that I love to eat so that when that urge to eat out hits, uh, I'm able to just say, oh no, you know what? This is gonna be good enough for me. Okay, which ties in with my other tip. These are out of order, which is to eat at home. When you're trying to get the pounds off, over 40 it is definitely slower with the weight loss when you're over 40. That's just the truth. It's just the truth. It's the painful truth. I definitely recommend eating at home as much as possible, which has been really easy this last year because we've been on lockdown. Go to Trader Joe's and get things that are pre-prepped for you. I do a lot of frozen veggies that I just roast on a pan. I do like the frozen salmon from Whole Foods. It's individually wrapped. I do salads from Trader Joe's that are already made for me. So get things that are convenient. I always get the rotisserie chicken and then I'll just shred it and put it in a glass container and have that for my salad. So I pretty much have a chicken salad every day for lunch. This brings me to my next tip. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, people. Keeping it simple means eating a lot of the same things. I know it's not sexy, but I do eat a lot of the same things, but I love what I eat. So when I find meals that I like, I put them on repeat. I eat pretty much the same one of like two breakfasts. So usually for breakfast I'll have, this is like exactly what I have right now and I love it. I'll give you my full breakfast recipe. I do 
frozen bell peppers from Trader Joe's, spinach, sun-dried tomatoes, the ones from Trader Joe's. So I spray the pan first with avocado oil spray. I put the spinach, the bell peppers, ugh, what did I say? Sun-dried tomatoes in the skillet and let them, you know, saute. And then I do one scrambled egg and then I do two chicken sausages. So I make like this veggie scramble and then I do a little sprinkle of cheese. Okay, so it's like a little, it's almost like a frittata, but it's not. I make that little veggie scramble and then I do a cup of fruit, whatever, mixed fruit, doesn't matter, I eat all fruit. And then I make this oat bran concoction that's like kind of weird probably, but I do oat bran with cinnamon. I just do like a quarter cup of oat bran with some cinnamon and some stevia. Okay, so that's my breakfast. That's what I have. And then I have like a, a maybe like a tablespoon of fat, like butter. Um, sometimes I'll have Greek yogurt and fruit with chia seeds. So I those are my favorite breakfast breakfasts. That's what I usually eat. So once I find what I like, sometimes I do eggs and bacon too, actually. Yeah, sometimes I'll do eggs and bacon. Sometimes I'll use that oat bran to make oat bran pancakes if I'm feeling fancy. But honestly, those are like one of three breakfasts that I eat regularly over the last year. That's pretty much what I have for breakfast and it, it works. So keep it simple. Find things that you like and just put them on repeat. Keep it simple. What's next? Oh, the next one. This is uh, what I call the 72 hour rule. So it's basically, if you are starting a new way of eating, just know that the first three days, especially if you're getting off sugar or getting off flour or getting off both, or making any kind of significant change to your diet, you are going to probably or possibly be in withdrawals or pain for the first 72 hours. That means those first few days, it is going to be so painful, you're going to have to like almost be like white knuckling it and you're gonna just have to put all your energy and focus and just know that the first three days for sure, sometimes the first seven days, three to seven days, it's gonna be painful. It can be painful when you're making a change to your food plan. And for me, when I got off sugar and flour, I had headaches, I had major anxiety, I could not sleep at night. So I took z -Quil type things, like things to help me go to bed. Use whatever tools you have to use. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not giving any kind of advice, but I'm just telling you what I did, which was I did take sleeping aid in the evening to help me sleep at night because I was so wired without the food sedating me. Like I was eating that much and just that's how sensitive I am to sugar and flour, that it totally gives me a sedative effect. It makes me feel like, ah, like I'm on drugs. So as I was getting off of the main drug, I had my substitute drug, which was like a sleeping aid. This video really is for people who are <laughs> hardcore, like <gasps> hardcore food addicts, sugar addicts. If you're uh, on heroin, they put you on methadone, I think, to get you off heroin. It's like methadone is still a drug, but you're getting off the heavy thing and you're substituting with this. It's the stair step, you know? So step your way into your new life. First three days, first 72 hours, it's gonna be it might be hell, it was for me. Next thing that you need is a support system. I have an amazing support system. I have a great community around me. I have great friends that I rely on, but maybe your husband is supportive. Maybe your neighbor, maybe it's someone at your church, someone at your job, but just make sure that you get some sort of support. And if you have to pay for that support, if you have to get a therapist or a life coach or join group therapy, whatever, get community around you that will support you in becoming your best self and really making this lifestyle change, this change for your life, for your health, for your mind, your body. It's so big, like losing weight is such a big thing and getting to a healthy body weight is such a big thing. So you just, you can't do it alone. Don't try to keep it secret and private and just, I'm gonna do it on my own. Don't do that, you, it's not gonna work. You really do need to have that support. Oh, 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 here's one more. <laughs> Tip number 10. Yeah, it is. Okay, it's extreme self-care. Also what I like to call top line behaviors. It's kind of like, the analogy for me is a newborn baby. You're taking away, in my case, I was taking away my drug of choice, which was food, putting food in its proper place. I'm eating three meals a day. I'm not snacking. I'm not eating foods that make me feel drugged and sedated. I'm like a newborn baby. I'm like new in this new world and this new life. So I need to be super gentle with myself, super caring. Do the things that make you feel so good, that make you feel taken care of. You are investing in yourself. You are your most valuable thing you could ever invest in. You're putting all of that love and you're doing it through action. I have a list. I should have brought it with me. On my list are things like take a bath, read a fiction book that I like, call a friend, curl up on the couch with 
my comfy blanket, put on loungewear, like take off all my stuff when I come home and put on comfy loungewear clothes. Do at least one of these top line behaviors every day. Working out is on my list. So breaking a sweat, going for a walk in nature, dancing in my living room. So those are all very different and they each have a different kind of energy to it. So, you know, honor your own energy system, depending on how you feel that day. And that's what I mean by practicing extreme self-care. Writing in my journal, going to therapy, reading spiritual literature, going to get a massage, going to get a facial, going to get my nails done, which I desperately need, getting my hair done, anything like that, anything that makes you feel good, anything that makes you feel safe, anything that makes you feel loved, anything that you know it's you taking care of yourself, just like how you would treat a newborn baby. Give yourself that much love. I think those are my 10 tips. Get honest, get organized, commit to your plan, have your healthy foods on hand, keep it simple, know the 72 hour rule that it's painful, have a support system, your extreme self care, eat at home and know your why. Those are my 10 tips. They're more like mental psychological, but that's really what this is. It is a mental thing, you know, cause anyone could just find a diet on the shelf at a bookstore and try to do it and it's not enough. Like dieting just is not enough. If you have food issue, you're gonna need to do the inner part, the emotional healing, the mental. I hope this video was helpful. I'll insert pictures throughout, I'm sure. I'll figure out how to do that. So you can see what I was like when I was heavier. Right now I weigh 193 pounds. The last I weighed myself, I was 240 when I started. I know I weighed more than that at some point. So I'm just counting from 240. So I'm 193. I think I'll probably stop when I get to around 170. Again, this is my own personal experience. This is just what I wanted to do with my body. I hope it all goes without saying. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm 5'6", and uh, I'm a size 12 right now at 193. What I eat in a day, yeah. So I already gave you my breakfast. Lunch usually is four ounces of protein and a couple, a couple um, scoops of veggies, like two cups of veggies, and then some salad dressing. And then for dinner, I'll usually do something warm like uh, steak or salmon, some sweet potato, like half a sweet potato. And um, what else do I like to have? Roasted veggies, butternut squash. I do spaghetti squash. I do full fat everything. I don't do low fat. I just eat real foods, whole foods, real foods. That's typically what I eat. I don't snack. I don't eat sugar and flour. And because I get migraines, I don't even drink alcohol. I don't drink caffeine. That's really a travesty. I really miss coffee. That's like a whole separate thing. So I have, I eat in this way to be healthy, but then it's also, I'm eating to avoid chronic pain. Uh, also, there are a lot of foods that I have to avoid and, and beverages due to chronic pain condition, my migraines. So yeah, but uh, that's what I eat. I keep it simple. Three meals a day, no sugar, no flour, no snacking. It works. 47 pounds. I'll send an update video. You know, it'll probably take me another year to lose the next 20 pounds, but I'm in no rush. That's the other thing. I'm not in a rush to lose weight. I'm just letting it be the side effect. It's like the weight falls off as a side effect of living this new life. Focus on the life. Focus on these uh, tools and the actions and the new behaviors and the weight will take care of itself. All right. Thanks for watching today's super long video. I hope you liked it. Please Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with anyone else who you think would enjoy it. I'll see you next time. All right, bye.